Hello, this is Eugene Blanchard and uh, what we're going to do is talk about Cisco Packet Tracer and WebSockets, real WebSockets, so we can access Cisco Packet Tracer from a web browser external on the real network. So the very first thing I'm going to do is uh, WebSockets, real WebSockets is supposed to be used by the SBC, small board computer, I think it is. So I'm going to use a server instead. So I, I brought up a server. If you click on it, we can go to programming. Um, should be no, no projects here, so I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to call it WebSocket. And I'm going to use, you have a choice, JavaScript or Python. Um, it's advantageous to use JavaScript because what we'll find out later is that pretty well all of the programming in Packet Tracer is in JavaScript. Uh, I'm going to use Python just because it's a little bit easier. And that. So I'll go down to, uh, here we go, real WebSocket server in Python. Create. Um, go into main. And now once we're in main here, what we'll see is that uh, it actually uses the real HTTP server. Uh, it's going to talk on port 1234. I'm going to just change it to 4040. Right? And, uh, and that. So what it has is uh, uh, just a few subroutines. It says on new... Uh, uh, WebSocket client. What we're going to do is do a connection and when we do a connection we're going to print uh, a message here. And this will print at the bottom. So um, what I find is that a lot of these messages within uh, the programming in Packet Tracer is uh, pretty generic. So I always want to know so I'm going to say server 0 uh, WebSocket connection to the remote client and I'll do the same thing here is that when we receive data, I'll say uh, server zero WebSocket received from the client. So that way we, when we start looking at our logging, then we'll know exactly who's talking to who, right? Uh, so basically what happens is uh, uh, we have our main loop here. Uh, when a new client is connected to root path, uh, we'll have a server WebSocket. It'll say uh, do this little routine on WebSocket new client and it'll print the server start port. Right? And it's going to do this forever. While true, we're going to sleep. So it's just going to do a little loop here. So it gets a new uh, uh, client. It's going to go to our new client routine. Uh, that's going to pick up the client's, I believe this is picking up the client port number that it's talking on. And then it's going to print this if it's uh, when it's connected to, and it should print this when it receives data. Right. All right, so we're going to run this. Uh, and it's going to ask, do you want to allow the HTTP server on port 4040? Yep, I do. Uh, let's bring this up here, and it says starting the WebSocket, and it's running true. Okay, so let's just close this up. And now what we need is a client. So I'll bring up a, another server. That'd be server one, open it up, go to my programming, hit new, uh, new project. This is a WebSocket, WebSocket client. And I'm gonna bring up Python again, just cause uh, I've been working with Python here. WebSocket client, and we're going to create this, and we're going to open up main. And what, now what it does is it's going to look for a server IP. Now, because this is a real server, what it does is it uses the IP address of your uh, PC. In this case, is my desktop computer. My IP address, I could either put one the local host address 127.0.0.1, uh, but instead, I'm going to actually put my IP address here. Um, it should be 192.168.1.69. And the server port we're going to talk to is 4040. Right? And that's basically all we have to do. Now I'm going to bring this over here. I'm going to open up this guy. Um, where is my server one. All right. So now we can test it. So as soon as I start running it, what this does is it's going to, uh, uh, actually I want to change something here. So on our client, what we're going to do is 
we're going to, again, it has generic um, logging messages. So I'm going to say server one connection changed. And then what we're going to do is server one WebSocket received. And I'm going to put this WebSocket. Uh, I do this because uh, I've been running different protocols here, so this way I have an idea. And now what's important down here, uh, we're going to take a look at the, our uh, main routine. Main routine, connection on connect. We go to WebSocket connection change, right, which is up here. It's going to say server one, we changed our connection. It'll have a string type from uh, a 0123456. Uh, we'd have to look it up to see exactly what those mean. I think six means disconnected or something. We'll see. And then on data, right? So it's going to say on receive, uh, and it's going to say server one WebSocket received plus data, right? And do we have a, a listing for data here? No. Okay. Um, now when it actually connects, it connects WebSocket protocol slash slash server IP plus the server port. So this is our server IP and this is the port. So when we talk on on uh, web sockets, instead of going like HTTP colon backslash backslash, we use web socket, WS colon uh, forward slash forward slash, sorry. And uh, while the, the, we're into a little count, while the count is true, basically what we're going to do is a little loop here. Client state is three, um, which I believe, we'll see that, I think that is uh, active. And what we're going to do is we'll say, server one says hello okay. and the string count so basically it's going to count up here and it's going to count the number of uh, ones we do and that, so this is basically what this does so I'm going to make this a little bit narrower again and what we're going to do is run change to two to three uh, so what we have here is on our server zero WebSocket received from 192.168.1.69 with the data. Server one says hello, and it's counting how many times we said it. And this is what, uh, uh, and it just echoes it back. And so server one WebSocket received says server one says hello, right? So basically what happens is we're sending this message to our server zero. Server zero is bouncing it back. So now we know that the, uh, um, our WebSocket is working. It's working from uh, uh, within uh, Packet Tracer. So let's try outside of Packet Tracer. So I'm going to bring up uh, Opera Web Browser. I'll just close this down here. And with Opera or Chrome, you can get a utility. And the utility is a, a web server client, a WebSocket client. So I click on here, I look at my extension, WebSocket Test Client, and I can bring this up. Now, um, let me just bring up uh, my notepad. I'll open this up, WebSocket Test Client. Um, what happens, this is the address that you can get it. What I'll do is I'll post it in the description of this video, and that way you can get this. Uh, that. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my URL ws colon slash slash and what I'll do is uh, 192.168.1.69 port 4040 that's the port and I'll open it. So I'm just going to move this uh, over a bit here so it's opened right and then I can send a message so Oppo WebSocket client test, and I will send it. Right. So what it did is it sent Opera website client test, and we've got a response back from it saying Opera. So it echoed our server zero Opera WebSocket client test. We look over here. Here's server zero. Uh, we received from uh, 192.168.1.69, that's the IP address of my desktop PC with data Opera Web Socket Client Test. I can do the same thing with Chrome. So Chrome, I'll close this down. Uh, Chrome, once you install the extension, it's over here. I'll go Extensions, Web Socket Test Client, open it up, and I put the same URL, ws colon forward slash forward slash 192. 
.168.1.69, port 4040, and it's opening. It's open, so we, we've connected up to it. And what I'll do now is I'll say uh, Chrome. WebSocket test. Send. So I've sent the Chrome WebSocket test, Chrome WebSocket test received and over here. So what we have now is we have two web browsers that are external to Packet Tracer talking um, within Packet Tracer. This could very well be uh, the basis for a chat program if you wanted, right? Uh, what we'd have to do is just massage the server um, program so that when it does receive a, uh, a message from either one of these web browsers or anybody connecting up to um, its external real-world IP address, now we can start talking. Um, now, we can take this further, is that it could be uh, become a, a, a WebSocket tunnel into the network or maybe a gateway and that. And what we'd have to do is know more about the programming that's available within uh, Packet Tracer. So if we go to extensions here, uh, what we have is scripting. We can configure the PT script modules. And if we look at these PT internal ones, um, we can edit this. It's going to ask you, uh, let's, uh, do we want to resign and edit? At this point, no, we're just going to do read only. I'll bring this down here. And what we'll see is that there's a script engine. When we go to the script engine, what we can actually see is all the scripts that are running and we can inspect them. So if I wanted the real uh, HTTP, oh, one of the things I want you to notice is that all of these scripts are in JavaScript. And this is what I mentioned earlier is that you have a choice of working in Python or JavaScript. And uh, this is something I found out after I've gone through all this, is that I was working in Python, it was a little bit easier for me, is that I recommend that you stay in JavaScript so that way you can easily inspect what's happening on the script here. So if I click on real HTTP in JavaScript, it's got all of this information here so you can actually see how uh, Packet Tracer is working with the examples. So there's real HTTP, real TCP JavaScripts etc. So I think there's a lot of uh, um, possibilities in uh, playing with uh, um, um, Packet Tracer and real world and connecting up to it. Um, what you need is more uh, skills than what I have. I've taken as far as I, I can. I hope you enjoy this. Uh, uh, give me a like if you like it and uh, we'll see what happens next.